the father of the space age. Now this guy, who was at Cal Poly Tech, right? This guy, Jack Parsons, was openly a devil worshiper. He developed the fuel that enabled us to penetrate the stratosphere. Satellites could not have come about without this guy. In his diary that he himself wrote, he had a dream. This is 1948. He had a dream where he saw somebody that he calls Belial Dajjal. And he tells him, you are helping me. Okay, I'm not making this up. You think I'm making this up? Wallahi, I'm not making this up. You go look it up yourself. Okay, so where's all this stuff coming from? Where's all, seriously, where's it all coming from? <laughs> We're in the age of the Dajjal, you know. It's just Allahu Anam, when and where and what. But this is it, people. As far as I'm concerned, it's end game. Huh? That's why Allahu Akbar, water and prayer and qibla can't take that away from us. So just keep doing, you know. I mean, Khabab wanted to, you know, he wanted to ask for death, you know. And he was with the Prophet him. Can you imagine that? Wanting to ask for death and you're living with the Prophet? So what about the age of the Dajjal? People will go by grave saying, would that I was in his place. Laytani makanahu. So we need to prepare as much as we can. You know, but the, the technology, if you study where all this technology comes from, okay, you know, read about the magic and the enlightenment period. All these scientists were magicians. They were all into black magic. You read about uh, Francis Bacon. He, I, I just read a, a, a biography of Francis Bacon called Knowledge is Power, Magic and, and, and the Creation of Modern Science. Francis Bacon was reading all these magical books. Uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, what's his name? No, the guy that wrote it. No. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke. Arthur C. Clarke, great technologist. He actually uh, has some, most of the patents that enabled the satellites, right? If you look at his interview with BBC in 1961, where he predicts the internet, he predicts uh, the cell phones, he predicts uh, texting. He said that by the year 2000, people are going to have handheld devices that enable them to talk to anybody anywhere, right? Arthur C. Clarke said, and he has three laws of technology. One of his laws is no technology reaches a level of, of complexity except it becomes indistinguishable from magic. So, you know, I don't know. I'm not a big fan. I'm not a Luddite, right? I'm using a microphone right now. I'm not a Luddite, but this whole worshipful attitude towards technology to me is really stupid. And, and, and if you want to read an interesting book, it's called Giving Up the Gun, uh, which is about the fact that the Japanese chose consciously to ban the gun. And they did it because of the samurai lobby. Because the samurais thought it was disgusting that a man could spend 30 years becoming a master swordsman and some idiot could pick up a gun and just kill him. They just thought it was just so unesthetic. And so they outlawed the gun, even though the Japanese were making the best guns in the 16th century on the entire planet. They had solved the problem of, uh, of the water because they used to go out when it was wet or damp and the powder got damp. They actually had waterproof uh, powder kegs in their guns in the 16th century. And we know Japanese technology. I mean, it just took them a little while to get used to the cars and now they're making better cars than any of the American cars. I mean, the Japanese have itqan when they do things, but they outlawed the gun. This whole idea that because it exists, oh, why do we do it? Because, you know, it's like these people say, why did we climb Mount McKinley? You know, or what, what's the K2? Is that what's K2? What's the tallest mountain in the world? Everest. Why, did, why do we climb Mount Everest? Because it's there. I mean, what a stupid thing to say. 
That is so dumb to me. It's like these chirpas down at the bottom. The only reason they'd ever climb that is because you're paying them. They've been at the bottom of that mountain for centuries. They never thought about climbing. It's like, I'm not going up there. You know, and what do they get up there? You know, they get up there and, and they can't breathe. First indication, you're probably not supposed to be there. But they literally get blown off the mountain by wind. You know how many people have died? That, that British lady who left her kids in England to go climb Mount Everest. She got blown off. She orphaned her children. SubhanAllah. Well, because, oh, we should do it just because we can. Just do it. That, those are, these are demonic uh, slogans of this, of this uh, age. Just do it. You know, no limits. <laughs> who made that one up? No limits? What do you mean? You, all you are is limits. You're limited in your space. You're limited in the decibels that you can produce. You're limited in, in your breathing. You're limited in your intellect. Everything's limits. No limits? What are you talking about? Stupid people. <laughs> no, seriously, just mad people. Anyway, time to pray.